hope this message finds you and your family well. This year marks the 100th anniversary of sworn policewomen on the Los Angeles Police Department. We will be hosting events to celebrate the achievements, history, and leadership of women in the Los Angeles Police Department, as well as the department's commitment to the next generation of women officers. From the hiring of Alice Stebbins Wells in 1910 to the retirement of the last policewoman in 2007, police women contributed greatly to the safety of this community. Over the years, women on this job have overcome the disparity of unequal pay, rank, and work assignments. Their struggle is often briefly stated, but rarely elaborated. Specifically, this struggle includes legal, societal, and physical barriers. Each transition was wrought with lawsuits, a need for culture change, physical demands, and dangers inherent to the job of a police officer. Nonetheless, women began petitioning city leaders to effect change. In the 1800s, women were not legally able to hold the job of policeman. When women were hired by the department, they were restricted in job assignments. There was no career path for the police matron. The duties of the matron were confined to the jail and dealing exclusively with juveniles. Police women were limited in their work assignments as well. The job classification of police women was initially restricted to assignments of jail and juvenile divisions. However, their duties and assignments expanded to include vice and much later in the 30s, detective assignments. Police women were not considered field certified. Police women were able to promote to the rank of sergeant, but only to supervise other police women. It would not be until the 1970s when the department responded to the Blake lawsuit that the unisex program was instituted. Police women, although hired under civil service rules and vested with powers of arrest, were not assigned and or deployed to patrol cars as men were. They were not viewed as equal to policemen. Neither were they viewed as equal to detectives. Rather, in the 1930s, a policewoman worked in conjunction with the male detectives. Overall handling issues of women and children was within the purview of their job description. In the 1960s, women were finally allowed to try detective work as the department experimented with assigning two women to work a detective assignment. The category of policewomen, as we knew them for 97 years, has been retired into history. Those proud women carried purses, wore skirts, and high heels as their uniform. While the early females took on support positions, women of the 60s began shifting into positions of supplanting or rather working side by side with the men. Yet they were often prohibited from promoting to the rank of lieutenant. Even though not all the early women were interested in working the field, equal pay for equal work changed things on the Los Angeles Police Department for both the men and the women. The unisex program shattered that barrier to promotion and entitled women the opportunity to wear the LAPD police officer badge. Many women cut their hair and donned the policeman's uniform, pants, combat boots and all. During the 35 years or so since the Blake Consent Decree, women officers have risen through the ranks of the LAPD. This department has had women in every rank with the exception of Chief of Police. It should be noted, however, that two women have in fact not only been eligible but have openly competed for the job of our chief. Height and weight requirements excluded many women from even applying to become a Los Angeles police officer. Ironically, there was literally a wall that they were required to scale as part of the qualification process for ent entering into the academy. No matter the existing legal rights or social opinions of women in policing or the community support for or against them, in the end, individual women were required to compete physically with men for police officer jobs. Upper body strength was at issue. Combat wrestling was a standard part of academy training that simulated an officer's ability to control a suspect and effect an arrest. Women's jobs within the department have indeed transitioned during the last century. Today, the department employs roughly 1,878 female sworn officers of varying ranks. Currently, there are approximately 2,100 female civilian support personnel on the department. With the open doors of traditionally male-dominated specialized units for women, their job opportunities are greater than ever. Today, women are working the field and detective assignments. They are supervisors and managers of varying ranks. They are currently assigned to all specialized units, robbery homicide division, SWAT, air support, and every other assignment on the Los Angeles Police Department. 
As many of you know, we have a display in the lobby that exhibits the history of the Los Angeles Police Department. In the upcoming weeks, that historical display will coincide with 100 years of women in law enforcement. The exhibit will feature female officers' uniforms dating from the last 100 years and how they have gone through a variety of styles before it became identical to the male officer's uniform. The exhibit will also feature a variety of artifacts. Next time you're in downtown, please take the time to visit the exhibit. And lastly, I want to thank my detectives. In the last year, Robbery Homicide Division has arrested two of the most prolific serial killers in the history of Los Angeles. John Floyd Thomas, about eight months ago, and most recently, Lonnie Franklin, the grim sleeper. The rest of Lonnie Franklin ended a 25-year reign of terror in South Los Angeles, killing at least 11 women and possibly many, many more. Mr. Franklin truly preyed on those who were least able to defend themselves. So I want to thank the detectives of robbery homicide. I want to thank the detectives in the entire department who contributed to this case and many others. You made me proud and you made the city safe. Please take the time to review the names of the detectives involved in the Grim Sleeper arrest as they scroll before you. And all of you, keep each other safe, and I'll talk to you next time.